Yes, I tell an I vision straight in a coastal vibe, you don't know, say. In a Diani, you know, Bidi Badu, Kampi, big up the sister and Janine. Yes, I positive and conscious message and lyrics. I am because you are, remember where we're from. Moon to, moon to Africa, motherland, Guinea, Ethiopia, Congo, El Sudan. All the different names we want, Al Kebulan. Given by the people where I come here, so Philan, the Arabs and the Greeks, Chinese and Indians, hieroglyphics in the pyramids that them will still stand. Yes, I African people, you have to know yourself, eh? that the message is in the music and the music is the message. Yes, sir, Rastafari revolution in this year time. Culture, you know, is the basis of all civilization. So you have to know yourself, black god and black goddess, Emperor Eli Selassie and Empress Menen. Who am I? Yeah, man, I am Janine, Nine, Janine, Jokey, Pony, uh, living in the West, musician, producer, singer, songwriter, activist, they would call it, but really just servant, you know, making, a, making myself available to whomever of my brothers and sisters that need assistance, wherever I go. So, here coming home to the continent, again making myself available to I and I community to see what the needs are, how I can serve. Serving through the yoga, serving through the music, using that as the vehicle for healing of self and healing for, you know, brothers and sisters. Give thanks. Uh, when you talk about yoga, what can you talk about the holistic healing and the role of even ganja and all these different things, even the, the diet, the idol. Yes, I. A lot of that is a part of yoga. Yoga is way more than just stretching the body. It is the connection with breath, with the life force energy of this universe. And so we are not the only creatures that use the breath. The animals, the plants, the crystals and minerals, you know. So we all have this relationship with the Most High, which is, you know, the unseen that dwells within us and around us and within everything. And yoga helps us to connect with that. And yoga is an ancient African practice. It is an indigenous practice. It is indigenous to this earth. So every ancient culture has practiced some form of connection with you know each other with the land with breath withdrawing the senses from the outside world and you know finding stillness stilling the mind mastering the mind to the point where meditation is possible meditation allowing them to reach to higher realms of themselves connecting with the highest the indwelling the most high you know throughout various cultures even here on the continent there are different words different terms used to express the same thing you know but we have always had that connection with spirit with ancestors and this is what yoga is about this is what the rest of our liberty is about as well this is what we practice when we eat a particular way when we observe the seasons when we detox our body when we exercise our body when we you know interact with others we try to ensure that we are not just articulating the right words but we are practicing in our actions the things that will help us to live long and healthy lives a lot of us didn't grow up with the knowledge and the wisdom and the liberty so there's a lot of correction that has to be done you know so we still even though we eat well we still suffer from certain things like sinusitis and mucus in our body. We still suffer from certain aches and pains. We still suffer from the body degenerating because of, you know, the way we balance our diet, the time of day that we eat. So there's still so much knowledge to be gained. But a lot of times, ones are not so interested in learning about these things. They are more interested in learning about superficial, secular things that really have nothing to do with their life. Mm -hmm. you know and um and so because of that these things are relegated to 
just eccentric people are interested in it. But really and truly, what is more important than life? You only have this one vehicle for this journey, you know, to experience, for, for the most high to experience life through this perspective. So you really have to take care of it. It is what we have, you know, and the more we learn, we have to be changed by what we learn. So we have to always be flexible so that we are not too rigid and when we become old, we are unwilling to take information that is going to help to heal us, to help us to live longer, you know. So we have to stay flexible in the mind and in the body so yoga you know and holistic living and natural living and trying to be as one with nature is very very crucial in this time um what, what is the importance of one growing his own food well that is crucial that is something that is not as easy as it used to be because and especially in Jamaica where I am from, like the government has sold off everything. So it's very difficult to get land to grow. So for me and my family, we have a, we have a home. We own a home and have a small space of land around. But my parents are country people. So they use even the small space that we have mm -hmm. to grow, you know, over 20 different types of food products. Yes, sir. You know, more than even flowers and gardens. It's, you know, food. So... That is what is crucial. It's really important. So even if you're not able to have a large farm like the one that we are on right now, you know, you can have your little plot of land and make sure that the things that you need to eat very often, you grow them. So like your greens, you know, make sure you have some fruit trees planted. If you can plant a one or two moringa tree, these things are vitamins and minerals. And, you know, when the Gideon bus, you're going to need some vitamins. You can't depend on the pharmacy. So you want to make sure you have your super foods growing. And those foods don't even require a lot of attention. You just need to grow them. You know, you want to make sure you have a little bit of the citrus, a little bit of lime for your cleansing, for your detox if you can. Just, you know, just learn about the things you need. Learn about permaculture. That is the new fancy term for it. But it's just not the, the monoculture type of thing where you have acres of the same thing raping the soil. That is not yoga. That is not living in one with the land. That is slavery of the land. So you really want to make sure that you, you have nitrogen fixing plants at the same place where you have plants that are, you know, everything serving its purpose. The plants that fall up, the leaves that fall, the fruits that fall, return to the soil and fertilize something that is growing below it, you know. You really want life, you want to encourage that kind of life for yourself and for even the food that you're growing. Mm. So whatever little you can, just make sure something out of your diet, it come from, you know, your hand so you can manage and monitor. And that will help you to even know when you're going out there and buying food from other people, say, yeah, this is not necessarily, this don't look good. This, you know, this too big or things, natural things don't look like that or, you know, and just practice that. And the more we do that, the more, you know, maybe that, that example will pass on. But we're living in a dread time now where people just don't want to wait. So they want crops to grow right away and they want big fat crops and they are not, they are willing to put fertilizers and poisons on their food. So we have to be very careful and mindful when we are eating. Give thanks. Um, maybe just to take a different direction. Mm -hmm. Um, what has been your, your observation of, uh, in Kenya so far, especially regarding the Rastafari movement? Yeah. Well, Kenya is huge, you know. <laughs> so I don't take for granted that I've even seen a, a, a majority of the percentage of what's going on and what is the representative. But um, what I've seen of even like the foundation is very encouraging. Is intelligent youth having intelligent conversations, you know, elders who are like beacons of light and knowledge and, you know, just beautiful traditions that make, you know, a one like I who is exiled in the West feel like, yeah, I need to come home. There's work that I need to do here, you know. Um, there is work to be done in Jamaica too, because even, you know, the youths are, the youths have a lot of opportunities in Jamaica. A lot of times they are ungrateful. They don't realize, you know, until they step into a situation where people have much less and are doing so much more with yeah. the little that they have, then, you know, then they really start to take a stock. So I just think it's important to share that. I think what, you know, the foundation is doing and the fact that you have talented youths, you know, working with the audiovisuals and putting these things together, editing them together 
and presenting them in a way that I can present it to the West and say, look at Africa representing themselves. This is beautiful. It's not foreign people coming and doing documentaries of the item. It's the item taking that initiative, and that is great, you know. And as a Rastafari, it is crucial to be that perspective, you know. You live in, in Kenya where everybody eats so much meat, you know, and it's not that that is not, you know, the African way or whatever. But when people used to live with animals where they would hunt and eat this meat, they had a different relationship with the plants as well. So they were balancing the things they ate so that they were moving that out of their bodies, you know, and they were detoxifying their bodies with the plants and the herbs that they balanced with the animals that they were eating. Now it's a different thing. The supermarket culture, you know, and you see it because you see the diseases that are prevalent now. You see the rate of disease going up and that is the telltale sign that something is wrong, something is off balance, you know. And our people cannot afford to eat like, you know, them. We are not built the same way, yeah. you know. Not even like the animals. We are not lions. We do not eat we do not have these very short intestines where the food just part. We have, there's a whole heap more going on inside and you see it on the outside, you see it. And so we really need to get back to that ancient knowledge because all of the knowledge is here. All of the fruits and the herbs and the healing is here. It's just we are so disconnected from that knowledge because we have been systematically programmed to hate our own culture, you know. And so there's a lot of work to be done just to get people to understand that what you have is wealth. They're not bringing wealth, they're bringing pollution. Mm -hmm. They're taking the wealth. And if you don't learn about it, by the time you figure it out, it'll all be gone. Give thanks. Yes, I. Yeah, maybe just a word to, to the youth and also to the sisters out there. You know, for the youths, just read. Especially here in Kenya, because my intention is to go through this continent, to spend time with the ones in each of the countries, to try and remind them that we are all one. You know, coming from the diaspora, it's easier for me to say that because we don't know where everybody was from. So we are there as Africans, you know. Here, everybody is very you know, proud of their tribe and their delineations. But in the West, we just know, say, yeah, Africa is one place, <laughs> you know. And even when you, when, you, when you learn His Majesty's teachings, I think he would agree that we, we, we kind of need to look at Africa as one right now because we are, we are under attack. We are under constant attack. And if we spend too much time fighting amongst ourselves, then we won't have anything left. You know, it'll all be taken from under us before we even can realize it. So it's just to remind the youths that your heritage is the richest and strongest on this planet. You are born on you. You are born with the advantage of being African melanated people. You are the highest beings on this planet, and when you are activated and 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 understand yourself and your power, then you there will be no force outside of yourself that can stop you. There is no weapon. There is no economic power that is stronger than the activated African man. You know, and when I say man, I mean mankind, womankind too. Because when we now talk to the sisters, like we are the womb bearers. So beyond our brothers, we are the ones now who are responsible for, you know, protecting the DNA of this planet. For we, we, we contain every single species within us. So we really, you know, every single thing that mankind can look like come from black woman. And we, we, there, there's so much that is being done to, to subdue her and to disgrace her and to put her down. And that is the same thing that we see being done to the earth. So we know these are negative things because we see the side effects of them. So now I would say to the youth, love the women, honor them, lift them up. That is the African, that is the true ancient African way. Lift up your women, make sure they are educated. Do not hold them down, do not abuse them, do not mutilate them. If you really want to see your nation develop in the real way, if you want to see your nation grow, you have to empower the women. You have to empower the women and the children. We have to lead with love because that is where the revolution is right now. You can't fight them with guns and bombs. They create guns and bombs and carry hair. So it has to be with love. It has to be rebuilding communities and strengthening and educating the youth so that they can find new and novel ways outside of their technology to solve some of our problems. Some of the most brilliant minds are here on the continent. We are just not given the, the opportunity to, to express, you know? And some of the greatest minds are trapped within women, unable to express themselves. So 
I say unto Rastafari, follow the example of his imperial majesty, who took empress men in one woman through his whole entire journey, exalted her, made her queen. Yes, who went out of his way to ensure that she was respected and lauded among women and watched her do some great works for the women and the, the people of Ethiopia. Follow that example. Lift up your women, empower them so they can build this nation. Yes, I. Ja. Rastafari, Rastafari. I. I. Empress I. Menin, I. <laughs> Selassie, I and Empress Menin, I. Give thanks. You've had it yourself. Yes, I. From the lioness mouth. And we give thanks for Mother Earth and for the time. Yes, sir. Ja. Rastafari. I. Selassie, I. And Empress Menin, I. Blessings to all of the brothers and sisters represented through the movement. And blessings to tell I and I vision, the true voice of the African youth, more and more strength to the item on this crucial, crucial mission. Respect. Tell I and I vision. Tell I and I vision. Don't tell lie. Tell I and I. Rastafari.